Today we're going to look at writing about presentational devices. On the foundation paper, you'll be asked to compare the presentational features of two texts. On the higher paper, you have to write about the presentational features of one of the texts. The texts are usually newspaper articles, advertisements or articles you would find in a magazine, such as these below. So we've got the front page of a newspaper, an advertisement for a charity, and also an advertisement for a mobile phone. On the foundation paper, you'll be asked to compare two of, the, two of them, and that's for the 16 marks. And on the higher paper, you'll be asked just to write about the presentational devices of one of these uh, media texts. This question is extremely important, as on the foundation paper, it's worth most of the marks. It's worth 12 marks on the higher paper as well, so it's still a very important question. Take a look at the graph of your performance in the last exam to see how you did in this question. For example, this student on the foundation paper could have scored a maximum of 16 marks. However, they only scored three marks. Now that's often because people get quite tired. It's the last question in the reading section. So you would have done all of these questions before. Okay, and it's also the time when you start to think I'm running out of time and I need to move on to the writing section. I don't want you to think like that. It's very important that you try and make as most as you can of these 16 marks. So make sure that you get more than three. This would have been that they'd just done a simple comment about some of the presentational features. They might have recognised that there was a photograph there. They might have recognised that there was a logo in there. But they didn't use P-E-E-E-D to write about those effects and they didn't compare them. So that's why this student only got three marks. So it's very important that we don't skip this question and we make sure that we make it allow, allow enough time for us to make sure that we can complete it adequately. So what do I mean when I say identifying the effect of presentational devices? Well, how to begin? What you must do is spend the first five minutes of the exam reading the texts. When you tackle this question, spend a few minutes annotating the presentational features of each article. So you can actually draw on your media texts the invigilators won't mind you doing that, they just get recycled, so that's not a problem. But what is a presentational feature or device? The question is just simply asking you to point out and explain the choices that the editor made when he designed how this text would look on the page. Think about how you presented yourself this morning. You put on clothes to make you look a certain way, you chose those to make you give a certain impression. It might have been that you put your school uniform on to give the impression that you're smart and you belong to Da Vinci. It might have been that you chose your own clothes for the weekend um, to give the impression of your personality, how you want others to think of you. That's just the same way that we go about presenting something on the page. We want to give an impression. So think about the times that you've designed posters or web pages. You made certain choices regarding the colour, the font sizes and styles, images, this question asks you to spot those choices and explain the thinking behind them. So the next few slides will summarise some of the presentational devices you'll find in most texts. So font style and size. The editor would have had to choose the right style and size of text for the purpose of the article. So imagine that you're a magazine editor, choose the right style font for each of the purposes listed below. So remember a font is a style of writing. So which of these would be suitable for a Halloween magazine? Which would be suitable for a child's magazine, a newspaper or a computer magazine? We can see this kind of electronic writing is suitable for a computer magazine. A computer magazine, spot the error. A free gift for every reader that would be suitable for a Halloween magazine because obviously it's quite scary, spooky kind of writing, written in red like it's blood. Very formal style of writing, that'd be suitable for a newspaper. And this kind of friendly, handwriting, childish kind of writing would be suitable for a child's magazine. So the style of the font gave us clues as to which magazine, magazine it belonged to. The colour of the font and the size of the font also gave us extra clues. You could write a PED about all of these features. So you could write a PED about the font, write another about the colour, write another about the style of the font and the size of the font. What's important is that we do write about them using point, evidence, explain, explore 
and deeper thinking to get those B's, C's and even up towards the A's and A stars. So here's an example. The editor has chosen a font that is suitable for a Halloween magazine. The writing is red and gives the impression that it has been written by hand. Notice how this is the, uh, the evidence. I can't exactly copy words from the text, so what I'm having to do is just describe what I can see. Now for the explanation. This type of font is often associated with horror films or horror images and so makes the font suitable for a Halloween magazine. Now that's not very deep at the moment, that's just like sort of a D grade. So to get higher up, we're going to explore. So go further back into the evidence and have a look in a bit more detail. The red writing also gives the impression that it is written in blood, which is quite frightening. And it also make you think of a horror story. Now deeper thinking, what's the effect of this? And deeper thinking, link it back up to the point. The colour red and gothic style of writing suggests that the magazine oops, will contain scary stories and articles suitable for Halloween. There we go, that's a, a high grade answer. And you get about two pages worth of writing to compare these or to write about the presentational devices. So you should be able to do quite a few PEEDs if you allow yourself enough, enough time. It is important though that you fill in as much of the space as you possibly can. So a quick task, on Microsoft Word, select a, suitable, uh, select a font suitable for the front page of a small child's magazine, a women's magazine, an arts and craft magazine, a serious newspaper article, a men's magazine. Write about your choices using P-E-E-D. You can pause this sli slide now, so why you do that. So writing about the images, nearly every text included in the exams over the last 12 years included an image to write about. It's worth practicing writing about any images to gain some marks. There's going to be an image in every text that they give you. So if you practice writing about images, at least you've got something to write about. So again, imagine that you are the editor. Use Google Images to choose an image for each of the magazines you chose a font for. So the following. So see if you can go onto Google Images, select the image that you think would be most suitable. Here's an example of what I did. I typed arts and crafts into Google Images and there were several images that I could have used. Now the first one, thought it was too dull. It's not bright enough. Uh, the second image, thought it was too childish. Uh, the crayons really wouldn't create a good impression. It looks like it's for preschool children. And that image is just too dull. The browns and the beiges aren't really very exciting. But this image, I thought this was a friendly image that's colourful. It looks inviting for the reader. The child's smiling. Got some nice bright colours there. A nice large smile. It looks like it's friendly and appealing. So look at your choices. For each image, list three reasons for your choice. Now using P-E-E-E-D. I wrote this about my choices. Remember, we're going to be writing about the choices that another editor makes, but it's useful to make your own choices and then write about them so you can get an understanding of why somebody else has made those choices. So here's my point. The editor has included, well, the editor has included something, so we've shown we've got some basic idea that the editor's made a decision at some point, and here's the evidence. An image of a smiling child who is covered in paint. So that's the description. Now for the explanation. The fact that the child is smiling suggests that she is enjoying painting, which gives the impression that arts and crafts are good fun. The bright colours of the paints on her hands also make art seem like a fun and happy pastime. So here I've explored in more detail. Furthermore, the image of the child suggests that art can be an activity for the whole family and so would appeal to wide readership. Overall, the, images, the image suggests that art is a fun activity and that links it back up to the point again. So try writing a PEED about your own image choice or write one, of, one from a newspaper or advertisement that you found in the house. Now another thing you could write about is a logo. Nearly all the texts included in the exams over the last 12 years have had a logo included in them. And logos are small images that you associate with a company, product or organisation. So try and identify the following logos and I've put some blank spaces over some so you can't see exactly what they are.
Lots of these logos are so well known to us that we don't even have to see the whole logo to recognise it. People are paid thousands of pounds to develop these logos. They have to think carefully about font images, colour and what they suggest. Let's look closely at the Children in Need logo. You can write lots about this. Any logo, if you focus in, then you'll be able to write lots and lots about it. So, here on the Children in Need image, we've got the yellow bear, and it's a cartoon bear, and it's got this colourful bandage over one eye. That kind of makes it look appealing to children, um, because the teddy bear is often a children's favourite toy, a child's favourite toy, and also the bandage, though, suggests that it's been hurt at some stage, but it also suggests, with the colourful dots on it, that it's quite a happy, a happy bear. It's not something. It's not a frightening image at all. The BBC logo within this logo suggests uh, something serious, something good quality. BBC is always associated with good quality, serious nature. So it makes us think that we can rely on this to be something authentic, something serious, something reliable. The Children in Need, Need logo is in curvy writing, a bit more formal, informal and relaxed, and so gives you the impression that it's also quite family friendly, quite fun perhaps, quite casual and relaxed. It's written in black though, which also suggests it's quite serious. It could be written in red or green or red, green, yellow, multicoloured letters, and that give a different impression again. But the fact that it's written in black gives the impression that it's quite a serious issue, as well as being something quite fun and friendly at the same time. Now I've written this PED about this font. But sorry about this logo, that's an error. This logo is effective because it creates a friendly, fun impression, but is also serious. The image of the bear does this well because a teddy bear is a child's toy. This suggests that children in need is a child-friendly event. Now explore. So we've hit the D grade there. Let's try and move this into a C. However, the bandage over its eye suggests that the bear has been injured, which links to the purpose of the charity to help children who may be hurt or suffering. Now my deeper thinking, so I'm going to go really deep, think about the effect of these and how it answers the question, what is the effect? The curvy font of the children in need also suggests this in comparison to the hard edges of the BBC logo, which is associated with a serious product. Overall, the logo suggests that while they are raising funds and awareness about a serious issue, children in need is about having fun too and looking after children. So I've got a nice, thick P-E-E-D there and think about how much that will take on the page when you've handwritten it. So getting up towards those higher grade marks now, we want to fill that space on these questions about the presentation. So take some time now to analyse these logos yourself and write about them using P-E-E-D. So you could look at the images, you could look at the uh, colour, so we've got blue there, we've got the red at the sports relief, we've got a water kind of image there, thinking green, the green, the leaves. So really go into a lot of detail, think about the font, brainstorm as much as you can about each of the image and then choose one to write about using P-E-E-D. Now on the foundation paper, you need to compare images. Now as long as you can write about one, Im one text using P-E-E-E-D, you can compare them in two texts. So let's have a look at two texts to compare. Right, we've got this advert for trainers here. Have you hugged your foot today? And 10 of the best on text two, an article from a magazine. Now this is what you call a Venn diagram. I'm sure you've seen these in class before. And you just list the presentational features of each article in the circle below. So for this one, we've got the image of a shoe, serious font of the main message, large black writing in capital letters, like it's a very serious message, like a newspaper headline. The Nike logo, not the log, curvy handwriting down here, and the white background, so the white and black makes it look very stark and very formal. Yet on this article, we've got 10 of the best in colorful writing. We've got the image of the runner, image of two happy people, people in love, the serious font of the article, it gives you an impression that it's something serious that they're writing about. It's written in columns, so it's obviously like a, a formal article, so we guess that it's about something serious and something truthful. It's not going to be a fun article. And it's on a beige background. Again, this colour adds to the article. Um, makes you think it's a bit less formal than a newspaper, yet it's still quite formal because it's written in columns. 
So what have they got in common? And that's what we're placing here in the middle where the two circles overlap. We've both got running images. We've both got series fonts. They've both got use of colour in the headline or title. And by the use of colour here, I mean that it's, it's used black to make it look quite harsh and quite like a newspaper headline. Yet in this, it looks quite jolly with the 10 of the best written in red, like it's something more lighthearted than the black writing. So now you can use the points they have in common to begin your writing. So both articles use images that are linked to running. Text one has the image of the running shoe that it is selling. So there's my description, my evidence. Explain, this is included because it shows the product to the reader in an appealing way. The reader can see that the trainer is being sold. Explore, the large image of the trainer shows that this is an important feature of the article. Deep thinking, the way it is positioned under the writing suggests that this trainer will hug your foot and so will be a good item to buy to look after your feet. Text two also includes an image that is linked to running. This text includes the image of a person running, so that's my, my evidence. This suggests that it is an article about a person who has run a long way. Simple explanation, deeper exploration. The way that the man is smiling suggests that he is happy when he is running or with his running achievements. Deeper thinking. This links to the title of the article, 10 of the best, and suggests that he is in a top 10 of some kind, perhaps as a runner or as a charity fundraiser through his running. And then what's important to do at the end of those PEDs is just to link them both together and make a summative comment about how they're similar or different. So both articles use these images to make it clear that the texts are both about running. In the time allowed in the foundation paper, you should manage to do about two or three PEDs to compare each article. So you could write about the logos that are used, compare the colours that are used, you could compare the images that are used. You could compare the way it's laid out on the page. So points to remember. The question about presentation is worth a lot of marks, so don't skip it. Write about the features using P-E-E-E-D. A good place to start is to look at fonts, logo, images and colour. Draw a Venn diagram to compare for those foundation students. And use connectives, however, whereas, or so, to compare. Most importantly, write as much as you can in the space provided. And you could even tackle this question first while you're full of energy and you're raring to go at the beginning of the exam. For the foundation students, this is worth the most marks, so it might be a good place to start. But do make sure that you read both texts at the beginning of the exam.